Hey, this is Timothy from Master of Memory. I got a question on the Facebook page from Joseph about mnemonic tactics for memorizing mathematical formulae. Now, the first thing I would say about this is to remember that in many cases, it's more important to get the concept of what you're trying to learn than simply to memorize a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. As a very simple example, when learning the distributive property, don't try to memorize a left parenthesis b plus c right parenthesis equals a b plus a c. You should instead find a way to remember the concept that when something is multiplied by multiple terms, it has to be multiplied by each term, and so in the other direction with dividing. But once you kind of understand that, the most important thing is to look up a few examples and then practice using it back and forth. In other words, some formulae are more tactics than simply formulas to memorize, and as such, the best way to learn them is through practice. At the same time, there are some formulae that are involved enough that it's helpful to use mnemonic tactics to memorize the formula even before practicing using it. Of course, the quadratic formula is the first one that comes to mind. Now, I can't right now give you a fully developed standardized system of math formula mnemonics, although that's something I'm interested in working on. For now, I'll just demonstrate how you should approach coming up with your own mnemonics. This formula boils down to x equals stuff on top of other stuff. Now, again, I don't have a standardized system, but it's helpful to think of the two things on the two sides of the equation as being in two different locations, maybe on two different hills apart from each other. Start with the stressed syllable of quadratic to decide what your story is going to be about. Now, the stressed syllable of quadratic could be rat. A rat is a quadruped, so it makes sense. Quadratic, quad, rat. Now, since x is by itself on one side of the equation, we'll just say that in this case, x is the rat. The equal sign is the binoculars he's looking through to the other side, the other hill that he's looking at. So x is on one hill, he's looking at through his binoculars at something on the other side. For any equation, x equals is pretty easy to remember. Now, what's on the other hill? Why is the rat saying rats? He's upset about something he sees through the binoculars. So on the other hill, we'll turn the two levels into a two-story fort. At the top level, on the outside wall, the rat's brother, B, for brother, has just been shot with an arrow. We'll use B to mean the rat's brother, and the minus sign will always mean that someone or something is being shot. Now, the reason B was shot with that arrow was because he was outside the window, but he couldn't climb up on the windowsill to get inside because he's just a little rat. So he was shot and died. Sad day. On the other side of the window, inside, there's this strong defense with a roof to protect against raining arrows since there seems to be a problem with arrows. And of course, this can only be represented by a radical sign. The rat's other brother is just inside, crying because of his poor defenseless brothers outside. But obviously, he's too short to see out the window, so he has a friend standing on his head to look out the window for him and tell him what's going on. His friend is a snake. See, there's a neat way to turn letters into objects to help remember them, but for now, we'll just use two and four as our examples, with two being a snake and four being a flag. But our main character, Rat X, the one looking through the binoculars, isn't just upset because of his brother dying on the outside wall. The saddest thing is that it turns out that the snake is a traitor. The snake laughs at the misfortunes of the rats on the outside, and from his position on top of the inside rat's head, fires his own arrow at the indoor flag to show what a traitor he is. The flag is against the AC unit, and the snake likes it hot, so he's getting a double win. He's destroying these rats' flag, and he's making the rats miserable by making it uncomfortably hot inside. Yes, the snake is winning. 
The rats can't go downstairs to cool down in the basement and to get protection there because another traitorous snake is down there too, coiled around the only armor that the snakes have, represented by the letter A. So, rats and snakes, quadrupeds versus double-crossing legless reptiles, that's the quadratic formula. Now, you aren't necessarily going to remember all of this right away. You have to reconstruct it yourself using the story once or twice. But after that point, it should stick pretty strongly. You may think that all of this is too much work just to memorize one formula, but believe me, it is worth it. Now when you hear quadratic formula, you'll think of our rat looking through the binoculars and everything that goes along with that. With just a little bit of work up front, you're making this one formula that you'll be sure to remember. If anyone watching this is interested in learning more mathematical formulae through mnemonics, I can do that for them. Or if they want to learn anything else, any help with memorizing or anything else related to accelerated learning, make sure to sign up at the link below and then use that to email me or just come to the Facebook page and ask a question there. Master of Memory is launching in just a few weeks, and I'm excited to continue sharing these ancient but effective and efficient methods for quick learning with the whole world. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.